his strongest picks. The Kestrel I was just about to touch on, I actually was expecting Gangstar to take it away from Truth of Light, just because it's a very strong pick right now in the update, and it's one of his best picks. However, the Black Feather goes through, and this time, I'm really hoping it's the Weapon Power Black Feather in the lane, because it's such a strong pick that we haven't seen so far, and I think it's because teams haven't recognized it yet. Hopefully, Nova can show those teams what Black Feather is made of. We'll have to see coming on into this one. It's going to be Arden once again picked up as the Cruel and Ryan taken off the board. Four potential junglers banned away in this one so far. Now we'll see where Gangstars want to go with this one. It's going to be Lulu Siu by the looks of things jumping on into this game. And it's another Rona. We saw this in Europe. We've yet to see it in North America. Is this going to be an Adagio with the Rona like we saw on the European side? That would be a little bit weak against the black feather because black feather is a is a hero that is able to get on top of adagio and kill him yeah it's also you know, the adagio the healing is a big factor but uh, that's actually it could work out because with black feather it always used to be he would just build the black feather build used to be serpent's mask into a poison ship that is not effective anymore you only get the life steal from one of those two items it does not stack it's also a little bit surprised that we're still seeing rona like because of that same reason. She used to use the same build of Serpent's Mask into a Poison Shift just to have that like almost infinite sustain, and now it's significantly nerfed. It could also be the Scarf. It's one of Lolo Gio's best heroes. He got a buff Ooh. in 2.9. Catherine Batiste. How do, we didn't this even talk about Catherine Batiste indeed. coming through here. This is a lane Rona, I'm expecting, weapon power with a jungle Batiste. Something I've heard about is jungle Batiste with a clockwork is really strong. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, really strong because not only do you get a lot of damage from your base ratio or base damage, the cooldown reduction that comes out of the cool clockwork reduces all three of your very long cooldowns on your ability. So it's a very strong pick that Gangstars could have been practicing very heavily. There's also the fact that Shatter Glass with a Dragon's Eye, you get a ton of crystal power. When you get your four soul shards as a Batiste, that crystal power getting doubled is absolutely insane. The numbers we could see coming out of this Batiste could be just through the roof when he throws those empowered bad mojos. But it's also the Catherine Batiste combo that we haven't really talked about. Like it, it just kind of slipped through because we just haven't seen it for so long. It is still such a strong shutdown com uh, combo. The Idris is going to be the final pick here for Nova. It truth Idris is I personally feel like his best carry uh he is a phenomenal kestrel player a phenomenal black feather player but i think the idris is his best but you're playing it into a catherine batiste they can shut down your mobility and shut down your ability to get your harassing damage down very hard he's truth is going to have to navigate these team fights exceptionally well all right thoughts on these compositions are before we get into it i mean gexas in my opinion actually has a better draft just because of the fact that they have Batiste, Rona with Catherine against a triple melee composition. Even though CP Idris will be able to become range once he picks up enough CP, I still think Gangstar's one draft is going to come down to execution. We definitely can't count out truth on CP Idris, however. No, we certainly can't. That Black Feather is going to be going to the jungle, though. Not going to see that lane weapon power. Black Feather, unfortunately, in this one, we are going to see the Idris likely going to lane in the hands of Truth. This is going to be a good one. I'm curious to see how this Rona is going to do. It didn't win over in Europe, but it was against a Rhyme. With Rhyme taken off the table, we could see some serious potential here. Now, I want to talk a little bit about how you think this Rona is going to be playing, because especially in the lane, this is going to be an interesting dynamic that we saw in the jungle in Europe. How does that differ coming in? It differs because you're obviously going to start very like with the Book of Eulogies to be able to have the sustain. That's really your only chance of surviving in the lane, because even though it's an, it just early on doesn't have a whole lot of pressure, once he starts throwing out those shock rooms, if he pokes you a little bit and you don't have the sustain available from the Book of Eulogies, you're going to get pressured out of lane extremely hard. But once you have that, if, as long as you start with the Book of Eulogies, you can just let the Idris push in towards your turret. Just last hit under your turret. You'll be relatively safe. You'll be able to farm up pretty easily without a whole lot of pressure. Yeah, I mean, and the Black Feather is going to be able to wreak havoc, in my opinion, because Gangstars will, will have to focus on CP Idris, otherwise his damage will take over. Black Feather with the Serpent's Mask breaking point type of build can do so much in 2.9 because of the health changes like we've mentioned before. His execution potential is very high. 
Absolutely. Well, we want to know what you guys at home think of this series as well. Hashtag Vainglory8 on Twitter. Let us know whether you're a Nova fan or if you want Gangstars to take this one. Certainly a lot up in the air for these guys. Gangstars, they're trying to get out of the challenge zone, whereas Nova, they want to fight for that number one or number two spot. We'll have to see who can take this one, but it's time to pass it over to our casters and get on into our second North American game, passing it back over to Dowsy and the Source. Thank you very much, Munchables Game, or series number two here, as Gangstars will take the Halcyon Fold up against Nova. Have to see which one of these two teams can come out on top, and uh, what we're going to be seeing here. It's Rona for uh, Lulu in the lane. Xenotech going to be taking that Crystal Black Feather, sporting the new uh, Scarecrow skin as well. Uh, and over on the other side, Truth going to be picking up Idris. It's going to be the second CP Idris we've seen here on 2.9. Uh, earlier on in the EU, Sneaky built it. However, he didn't build it correctly uh, for 2.9. So we'll have to see if Truth knows that Dragon's Eye is the, the way of life for CP Idris on this update. I just feel like Dragon's Eye is the way of life on, on the CP carries. I just like it too much. I like being able to build the stacking, especially when someone who does that great consistent damage like the CP Idris. Uh, but for the moment, no one looking to fight just yet. We'll see whether or not Lone Delphi has a uh, better response on the Black Feather than we saw with the CP Black Feather. It, did, it just didn't have enough, in my opinion, to get the job done. So I hope the uh, weapon power of Black Feather really uh, decides to shine. I do. Uh, I, I would argue that that Joseph just built Black Feather terribly. Like, and this is one of Joseph's. Uh, Weaknesses as a player, he, he relies on uh, his teammates to kind of recommend the right builds. Do you see a fight breaking out here? Gangstars have such a good level 1 compared to Nova. I don't know why Nova even entertaining the possibility at this point. You can see them just losing. Troop just has no damage. He's opted in for the sustained start in the lane. It's uh, Book of Eulogies with a piece of shielding and uh, that, that minion candy as well to, to get yourself um, lane um, pressure. It means you have no damage. Uh, you just have to auto attack to, to get your uh, to, to get the minions low. Use the chakram try and effectively. Eco is in trouble. Ooh, but a good minion candy will scare gangstars from fighting. The minion candy buffs those minions quite drastically, makes them hurt a lot. Yeah, and that's a that was a pretty significant wave for, uh, for them to be able to do that off of. So good good by truth to build that up. Now there's an additional wave here. There are pretty much two people dealing with him. Um, all on his own. Yes, uh, you know, Eco went back to base, but still, there's space created for the side of Nova. They've got some time to deal with the fact that they got pressured out in the beginning of that early game, and uh, also let Lone Delphi, you know, spend some time farming up the jungle without having to worry about a whole lot. Right now, it is currently Xenotech looking to try and take over the jungle here. On this Crystal Power Black Feather, not as effective into a Batiste, uh, Wow, I said it completely the other way around. <laughs> as a Crystal Power Batiste, not as effective into the Black Feather as your Rose Offensive allows you to escape the Ordained. And uh, Lone Delphi will basically be looking to do that anytime an Ordained does come down. As earlier levels, though, there is a lot of CC available. You can see Nova's trying to put the pressure onto Gangstars here. Mac Daddy takes a lot of damage. Gangstars now looking for the fight. It's three men, and look at Lone Delphi's health. Look at Mac Daddy's health. First blood will go to Lulu, and now it's Xeno Tech going to lose his life, likely to Truth. Gets a lot of healing done with the re perk. Perhaps his team can come in to try and find a returner. It's Iku who gets the kill with the Vanguard as well. So actually, that's a not a bad situation for uh, Xeno Tech. There denies Truth that uh, that gold. Yeah, and I actually thought Xeno Tech was almost about to walk away from that. Did really good. Uh, positioning, also spending time moving back in and out of that fight. Um, Lulu, you know, managed to dive forward, come back, and actually pick up that initial kill. So, pretty even between uh, both these teams for the most part. Truth is, you know, reasonably far away from being online, kind of getting to that point at which we start to see CP Idris, you know, really be able to play Jungle safely at that range. Uh, for the moment, though, it's going to be difficult for the side of Gangstars to actually siege. They really need to win a fight before they can pressure you know, any of these turrets in lane. That's just an objective that it's gonna take them a while to deal with, where on the other side, there's poke off the chakram, there's poke off the on point. There's just the general range that will come out of truth eventually. So, you know, I wanna see Gangstars pick up the pace a little bit, start to try and find some of those kills. Cause they've got a really good group team fight, especially in the early game. Truth, 
trying to hold on to his lane here. As a Xenotech, Mac Daddy B, going to put down some pressure. Lulu is going to be blasting these creeps. There's a roam coming up from Nova. As Delphi shows his face with the on points, just chucking out a bit of damage here. Now, it will allow Troop to, uh, to go back and get some items. In fact, it looks like they're just going to push us three. Lulu completes that, Sher uh, that Sherlock. Wow, <laughs> brain doesn't work. It's a serpent's mask for himself. And that's uh, a pretty big chunk of damage now available for Lulu. The sustain is unreal. Uh, you don't need to go poison shift ever on a Arona due to the fact that you have mortal wounds in your kit. So the Serpent's Mask, with a pen with a breaking point, just gives you so much sustain and damage for yourself. Yeah, and now I think they might feel more confident taking that fight. But again, we saw they had Truth kind of sitting under his tower alone. The rest of Nova decided to roam up, but there was no dive. There was no ability for him to get that damage. Oh dear, everyone is so caught out here. Truth will lose his life before Eco can get in range for the Fountain. And now Eco very likely to lose his life as well. The CC that a Captain Catherine and Batiste provides is disgusting. Eco will go down as Lulu spins red. Lone Delphi now without a Rose Offensive to escape will be lucky to get away with his life. Instead, Gangstars focus down the Sentry. It's three to one for Gangstars. And unfortunately, Truth has chosen wrong here. Shadowglass picked up for this address. The uh, preferred battlefield for Gangstars, not under the tower, but in the enemy jungle. And uh, Lone Delphi, ooh, he's gonna get hit with everything. Oh wow, Lone Delphi, the engage comes through even further. Lulu dives under. Is going to be him escaping Truth, doing his best to lay down some damage. A fearsome shade shall disengage with that shadow class purchased. We'll have to see how Truth uh, continues his build. It's very likely that he just goes the typical 2.8 CP address build, which would be an uh, alternating current next, then Broken Myth afterwards, and Eve of Arv Harvest to finish it off. Um, he needs that Dragon's Eye somewhere. You know, the, 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 the idea of CP address that made him so good was the fact that he stacked up Broken Myth so effectively pre-2.9. Does the same with Dragon's Eye uh, and is able to, to keep those stacks at 9 very easily. So we'll have to see if Truth decides to, to put the Dragon's Eye into his kit somewhere along the line. And if he does so, then I will be happy. Yes, maybe he will be brought back to uh, the true path of righteousness and picks up a dragon's eye. I'd like to see a second. I think there's still potential for him to be able to dish out significant damage pressure on the ego. He should be able to walk away from that and they commit the first shade. There's the gauntlet laid down. It stuns up Mac Daddy B. Lulu, though, very happy to get his hands dirty. And oh dear, Truth is in trouble. Has that ultimate available? He wants to try and escape. Lone Delphi going in, trying to find the kill. It's a lot of damage onto Lulu. He will fall down to Eco. And that is a kill going over to Nova. Not quite able to coordinate their uh, massive amount of CC lock to find a kill there. Truth didn't even have to use his ultimate. The one thing that is going in favor for Truth in the early game is the fact that the Shadow Glass does provide lots of burst damage. I just think he's going to fall off. And so uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to see how Nova decide to compensate that. Yeah, and he's actually sold his healing class early to gain the slot efficiency. So he, he he wants to go just put something in there, wants to be able to hold on to the defenses he's got, will hold the Book of Eulogies. So likes that bit of sustain he has when he's fighting here in the lane. Um, thinks that will be enough to, you know, at least top him off in between uh, the middle of fights. So yeah, interesting decision from him. Uh, at the moment, Lulu's got the breaking point, so that damage is solidly stacking up. Mac Daddy B has the fountain. Not much else, a little bit of defenses. Hasn't been able to work into possibly that echo for the double blast gem or, you know, even maybe a uh, crucible to be able to protect up against the uh, gauntlet out of eco. And uh, instant clockwork from Xenotech, so consistent damage coming out. I just don't Ooh. know if they have the real you know, burst they need unless Lulu is sitting in the back line and Truth is already dishing damage back out anytime they step up. Yeah, it's a very surprising pickup from uh, Xenotech at the clockwork. You normally see Shadow Glass prioritized on Batiste and often has been the case as well on 2.9.1. Clockwork does synergize very well with Batiste, but there is no damage to go with it just yet. We'll have to see how Xenotech is able to make it work. 
Yeah. And like you mentioned, the, the slot efficiency for Truth. Look at how many items he's got there. Uh, the Book of Eulogies, it does actually provide vampirism now. So it does provide a tiny amount of life still. Uh, unlike the previous Book of Eulogies, which just provides healing on minion kill. Lot comes out from Nova, but they all just walk away like they were feared anyway. Which uh, is perhaps a little bit of miss synergy with Eco. Not calling that he was going to block it. Yeah, and Truth has also gone for the additional reflex block, so wanted that to be able to deal with all of the crowd control that's coming out from the side of Gangstars, and is willing to wait a little bit longer on his build. He's gonna get pressured under Tower Lu. Actually popped the weapon infusion in the middle of that, so that's running now. This kind of forces Gangstars to look for a fight. Yeah, we'll have to see how they're able to do so. Breaking point with this Rona is a massive power spike. And that Gangstars will look to deal with very much so. And you pair Batiste and Catherine with a, a hyper carry. It's a very nice combination. So Nubu going to become that hyper carry for the team. Great block comes out of Eco, but the stun on to Lone Delphi. He's in trouble. Gauntlet laid down, stuns up a couple. Does mean that Truth can find the kill on to Lulu. And now that goes over to Lone Delphi. And it's Mac Daddy B, last man standing, trying to run away. Right now, Nova just dealing with Gangstars so perfectly, and there's going to be an ace coming out for them. Yeah, it cost them the initial objective of the turret, but a little bit of overconfidence from the side of Gangstars, diving a little bit too deep, putting all of their pressure onto Lone Delphi, who isn't a bad target if you can fully lock him down. It wasn't until the end of that team fight that they actually managed to do that, and that was leaving Truth all alone to be able to put continuous pressure uh, onto the other two members of Gangstars and, and then Lou, gold payout collected. Truth if they can stick to him, but that means they have to land all that initial CC, not not allow the um, glimmer strike to get off, and uh, that's gonna start to become more difficult. And it looks like it is gonna be old school CP at this point. Yeah, it is. We've got this replay going. You can just see them burst down. That Rona early on, and there's just no damage between Xenotech and Mac Daddy B. It was just an easy cleanup coming out from Nova. Xenotech's opted in for a broken myth after the clockwork. It's almost like he's forgotten to build Shadow Glass. This was like the typical build path. You would go Shadow Glass, then clockwork, and then broken myth. Xenotech's not gone for uh, the Shadow Glass, and, and it means he's hurting on the damage. However, the broken myth very effective with uh, low CP. Crystal and Century once the shielding is there, 50 shielding is the number. Um, and it can out damage a shadow glass once the the uh, the shielding's there. But you need the shadow glass nonetheless. It, it's not like not building the shadow glass for, for Batiste is seems appropriate uh, unless Lulu can hard carry his team. And, and currently we've seen that he he's just being dealt with by Nova. Yeah, I, I would have liked this build last update. If this were 2.8 and brokenness was stacked, you could kind of argue that he's gonna get some of that damage that he's looking to just get the pierce earlier on in the build, but with it just kind of offering the initial pierce, I don't really think that that's going to be enough. Until they can really get Mac Daddy B onto Truth, use that Atrus Pauldron to slow that, you know, that combo down, they're pretty much relying on Xeno Tech to get off that initial burst so that they can put pressure onto the front line and kind of force Truth to have to step up with just having the Broken Myth. I don't really think that they have that, and again, you're just leaving Lulu to have to dive the back line and be the initial damage source, and kind of the only damage. Currently, we are going to see Nova heading back up to the lane. There is fusions are ready to go for both Lulu and Xenotech at this point. Daddy B goes in for the stun onto Eco. Currently, Nova very happy to play at range. This is a part of the, the build for Truth, where normally a broken myth would mean a huge chunk of damage is now available for, for CP Idris. However, there is no stacking element to the Broken Myth now. It's just the Pierce, which is very effective once shielding is uh, purchased. But without the stacking element, the, the ramp up of damage, the Idris isn't going to hit any harder than it's always, uh, no, it's currently hitting. We'll have to hit. kind of keep our eyes on that, tabs on that, see exactly what that means for Troop. Gangstars as well, who, with Xenotech being so low damage at the moment, may not matter for Nova because they're relying on Lulu to output it all. Yeah, it's it's a matter of whether or not Lulu is able to find a team fight in the right position, the right target CC. Then you're now asking a lot from Gangstars. They're gonna go for it. 
great stun onto Truth, blocks up the Ordain, but wow, he is just dead. Lulu finds the kill onto the Idris, and now it's Eco trying to escape, but look at the stuns, he's just locked up. Another will come out, and it's a double for Lulu, they did it. They hyper-carried via that Rona. They've got two kills for themselves, and they're turning face towards that gold miner who has just 25 seconds to live. Ask for coordination and execution, and you shall be rewarded. They immediately managed to find the type of team fight that they needed. They put significant pressure onto Truth before there's really any time for the side of Nova to really respond. There wasn't time for Lundelfi to poke. There wasn't, you know, good time for Truth. Immense gold payout collected. I would have been blind if he was able to take that. That would have been amazing. <laughs> But it would have been very impressive. Might have, might have uh, given Nova a solid morale boost. And we do see Truth going into fourth CP item. Stole the uh, little bit of shield that he had. So maybe he's realized he desperately needs to have that stacking damage. Although in that last fight, he was pretty much taken out of the fight before there was any time. So, you know, no matter what build he goes with, even if he went Eva Harvest, even if he goes into the, uh, the Dragon's Eye, Really, the positioning matters more for what Nova needs to do, but I am curious to see where Cute decides, you know, what, what type of decision making he makes in terms of item builds to figure out what he needs for the game. Right. When I when this update came out, Saucer, I tweeted out two builds. I tweeted out like a normal CP address build, which would be Dragon's Eye, Alternate Current, Broken Myth, Eva Parvis, basically replicating a, a Crystal Power Idris build from previous updates that everyone was familiar with, and it's very effective, probably the most optimal build, but there was also the all-out damage build, which finished off with a, a Dragon's Eye as your last item. So perhaps we see Truth neglect the, the sustain and the, the healing that comes out of uh, an Eva Harvest for that Dragon's Eye for the full-on ramp up. Uh, over in EU, we saw Sneaky build a Frostburn, but Frostburn's been changed, so only abilities uh, proc the slow, which would mean Chakram, and of course your uh, Shimmer Strike, your ultimate to proc the slow, and it's just not very effective. Apparently, it's Nova all grouped up. Lulu doing so much damage to Truth. He jumps onto Xenotech, trying to escape, but look how far away he is from his team. Gets a Fountain, throwing out the Chakrams, getting healing as well, and they've taken out Xenotech, but Lulu's still alive. Lone Delphi in trouble as Lulu spins to win, but Truth is back, looking to try and output some damage onto the Gangstar's roster, and they're so split. Mac Daddy B escaping as we speak, and it will be Truth to take him down in just a second. They managed to get that Idris out alive, got the healing from the Treant, and was able to turn things around, Lulu's not going to look for seconds. Yeah, and we're seeing in that team fight that Lulu's damage is all that Gangstars has. When they don't actually manage to finish off Truth, if Lulu doesn't actually kill anybody, oh, wow. it just doesn't go their way, and now they're going wow. to get this one Whoa! for free. He got the kill onto Truth! Wow, that is incredible. That's impressive more than anything. That basically prevents Nova from getting a, uh, getting a crack in here. Holy moly, damage from Lulu. He is starting to stack up, going towards, I would assume, a bone saw last item just to, to try and cut through the armor that Lone Delphi and Yuko has. Okay, so maybe uh, Lulu is enough damage, but I, I don't know. I, I still think that the Xenotech's build has cost him a little bit in their engagement power, and now he's in trouble. He is in a lot of trouble, trying his best to deal with Lone Delphi, but he just can't. It's just not enough damage to do so. Mac Daddy B provides enough threat. Lone Delphi will be forced back. In fact, Lone Delphi getting stuck in that Ordain does hurt him quite a bit. We do see Truth opting in for an E, basically completing, completing what was known as the, the normal uh, Crystal Idris build of last Truth. Using that reflex box to escape, but Lone Delphi very low. Just about walks away. Eco with the gauntlet, stunning up Lulu and Mac Daddy B. Keeps everyone alive. Truth. Trying to lay down some damage, but there's no ramp up available. He just gets eaten up by the Rona. And now Lone Delphi, he's going to be next as Lulu jumps on in. Rose defensive to try and escape. There's going to be a Crystal Sentry taken here by Gangstars. Lulu really just providing the damage the team needs. I, I have been thoroughly corrected. Lulu is more than enough damage. I thought that Xenotech might have needed more to really help them finish off targets, but they are starting to really break apart the positioning of Nova. They're getting onto the backline. Granted, Lone Delphi was low off of that, you know, initial push into enemy territory. Still, he managed to walk away. He managed to heal back up. Moment that Truth steps up, stacking or stacking your item or no, 
he's getting removed from the fold, and now it looks like this could be a great Kraken for Gang Stars and really start to uh, let them actually push an objective because we haven't seen a tower go down in a long time. Yeah, it is going to be the Kraken secured there as Xenotech throws the Fearsome Shade to prevent a potential steal. This is it for Nova. They need to find a team fight quicker rather than later while Xenotech is back at base. Going to start taking down this Kraken here. They're going to do a lot of damage actually to the Kraken before it even hits a turret. Going to be very effective for them. Those Shadow Chakrams do do a lot of damage to the Kraken and Blackfair very quick at taking it down as well. Currently Gangstars marching forward. Maybe don't have much damage. What they do have is a lot of CC to allow Lulu to do his job. Xenotech stacking shielding as well. May go down towards a second fountain for his team. Here we go. Lulu on the backline. Truth getting eaten on up. Fountain will come out and Lulu will back away. But Mac Daddy B may not have the same privilege. He goes down to Lone Delphi. And that's going to be Lulu falling as well. Nova eat up Gangstars. And they will stop this Kraken from taking the choke point. Great defensive uh, play out from Nova. They spread out well. They instantly disengage and then are able to collapse back in on the members of Gangstars once they were out of position. Xenotech had used all of his crowd control, his full combo, Mac Daddy B had used everything. The Echo is up, so maybe he actually didn't get off the uh, double blast tremor, was probably staving it, I'm gonna assume, so that he could set up that combo or maybe just get off the double um, Merciless Pursuit. Either way, Nova will come out ahead of this, start to take some of these turrets down. We're starting to see the objective game kind of pace out. There's been a lot of fighting and skirmishing off in the jungle, and maybe now Nova will start to set things a pace. It's pretty much a full build for Truth. He can only get a little bit more shielding once he finishes the Aegis. Uh, you know, continue to run those crystal infusions, but he's not really getting that much stronger. Lulu, pretty much in the same boat. So question is, is where does Xenotech go in his build? Does he manage to scale up a little bit more? Might even be going for a double fountain. That extra bit of yeah. shielding in his uh, inventory, so kind of trying to crank the sustain, let Lulu run rampant. Yeah, I kind of feel like Gangstars are being let down by lack of damage at the moment. They've got one of the most strongest duos in the game. Yeah, the Batiste and Catherine is just so, so abusive, and when you build uh, Batiste in a similar fashion to 2.8 in the past, he is just so strong. With the clockwork buffs, he's even stronger on this update. With the uh, piercing buffs, he's stronger. Batiste is just such a, a strong jungler right now when played effectively, but Xenotech's kind of making him look a little bit lackluster at the moment, unfortunately. It's all on Lulu to be able to output the damage. Mac Daddy B, going to have to step up as well. Has that echo like you mentioned, going towards even more cooldown with that chronograph in inventory. If Truth can kite on back, may just be able to output enough damage over the time of a team fight. There's the Gang of Gauntlet falling on down. Xenotech with a fearsome shade, almost marches them into the walls. Xenotech in trouble. He is trapped between two walls. Lulu trying to do the damage, but that is Xenotech dead. Lulu, he gets stuck in the wall. He can't get onto Truth. That's where he wants to be. And Lone Delphi's going to eat him on up. He just needs to get one more faint of heart, and that's a death for Lulu. The execute on this Black Feb is so strong on this update. And currently, Nova are just steamrolling gangstars. A great initial setup from the side of Nova. They put a bunch of pressure onto Xenotech. They make it look like this is going to be great positioning for Lulu. And Eco with the double gauntlet basically on top of each other, leaving this small amount of space. No real ability for the side of Gangstars to maneuver around that area. And just really good kiting. Truth didn't give Lulu time to be able to actually land that initial burst to put out that damage and bring him down. He instantly got Glimmer Strike away. And I think that that was very prudent thinking from Truth just to disengage from probably his biggest threat as soon as it, you know, became anywhere apparent that Lulu was going to dive. Right now, Truth with a lot of gold in his inventory going to go towards those boots for himself. Picks up an infusion as well. It is going to be Nova's attempt at finishing off this 24 minute affair. Xenotech finds a third crystal power item. It's an Eve of Harvest for himself to sustain a little bit better in these team fights. 
Lulu diving onto the back line onto Truth. Gauntlet goes down, it's blocked up by Lulu, but Truth is very low and he will fall down. It's another silence coming on out and Lone Delphi now tries to escape. Everyone marches into the Gauntlet Wars. It's a second Gauntlet to trap them in place, but it is just an execution for Eco. Gangstar's now going to look to try and take down this Kraken. The Kraken will find one vein crystal turret, but with the damage on Rona, they should be able to take it down before it finds a second. Well-timed pressure onto Truth, that Blast Tremor to help uh, help uh, Mac Daddy B finish off the end of Perry. But I just praise Truth for just instantly disengaging Lulu, using the Glimmer, uh, the Glimmer Strike to just, just walk away from that fight. Just be like, no, 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 I'm going to get away from you. Give Eco time to set up all this crowd control, drop down those gauntlets. And this time he doesn't use it. It just, it didn't actually go through. He was completely bursting beforehand, I think because he thought he could survive the fight longer and gotten overconfident. Currently, things getting a little bit hairy for Nova. If Zulu is able to take truth immediately out of the fight, then it's uh, it's a bit of an issue for the side of Nova. You know, with Frostburn no longer being effective on Idris, the old Frostburn Shadow Glass basically pours uh, are kind of eliminated, but Frostburn was always very good into Rona, slowing her down and stopping her from getting on top of the Idris, allowing you to kite with your auto attacks. That's just not a thing anymore. Truth doesn't have any ramp up damage. He has completed his build now with the Halcyon Charges. There's a lot of uh, stamina regen. Yeah, basically, that's what you have as Idris is stamina. It's that yellow bar and uh, it kind of regens like energy when you buy energy regen items, just not as effectively. And so Truth will have uh, more uh, regen available for himself and cooldown reduction as well via the Halcyon Chargers. And now we'll be building up gold, which will go towards infusions. But quite honestly, at this point, if he gets the gold necessary, I think it's something like 1600 in his inventory. Sell that Shadow Glass and buy yourself a Dragon's Eye. He will have such a better time in the team fights for himself, ramping up his damage, be able to take down Gangstars far more effectively. Another team fight may break out here. There it is. Fish and Shade goes out, dodged out. Gauntlet is placed. Truth looking for a position where he can do damage from the sidelines as it's currently Lone Delphi taking the abuse from Lulu. It's going to be the Gauntlet walked on through. Eco Silence gets the fountain out though. Nova currently struggling to deal with the aggression from Gangstars as Truth's in trouble, but is able to do a bit of damage to Lulu. Forces a fountain out. There's a second Fearsome Shade. No, it wasn't Echo. That's just what Clockwork does for you. Mix those Fearsome Shades so, so, uh, come up so, so quickly. And everyone just walks away from the team fight. No victors were had, but Gangstars may look to start up the Kraken. Yeah, and that was the first team fight we saw where Truth actually had time to land a few auto attacks. We could have seen what that Dragon's Eye would have, would have built up. And that fight didn't look as good for Nova. They weren't able to actually get that initial damage onto Xenotech or onto Lulu. Pretty much everything went into Mac Daddy B. And although he is low, and that is making it difficult for them to be able to actually spend time taking this Kraken, it wasn't a solid result for Nova. We saw Nova forced out of position, sent running from the middle portion of that jungle. So maybe we are seeing some of that damage, damage deficiency for Truth, but it still requires Truth to have incredibly good positioning if he's going to survive these fights. And he has been doing just that. His positioning, in the most part, has been fairly successful. And he's been able to play around Lone Delphi and Eco to avoid falling too low in teamfights so that he can just get the Chakram damage out with that show glass. Currently, Gangstars are struggling to take down Nova. Nova may look for a fight, but look at Lone Delphi's health. He's very low. At half yeah. HP. You don't want to start a fight on half HP. But also, you don't want to go back to base, because if you do, and Gangstars take the Kraken. This is the difficult position that Nova is currently in and facing right now. Looks like Nova Delphi will backport, but it will get spotted out. And Gangstars should immediately move over to the Kraken to threaten Truth and Eco. But they may just want to start a team fight up without Lone Delphi there. See how quickly this goes down. Kraken did have its health reduced by 20% here at Source on 2.9 before being taken and then buffed by 20%. It means Krakens get taken very quickly when you are initially going for it. Here's the team fight. Fearsome Shade gets blocked up. Kraken at half HP. An all wave gauntlet blocked by Eco. Now he can use all of his items available. There's the gauntlet going down. Echoes it up. Kraken stolen by Lone Delphi. And now the gauntlets have been placed. Gangstar's trying to take down the world. And it is going to be
Lulu finding the first kill onto Delphi. Xenotech just escapes Truth, but eventually goes down in the end nonetheless. In fact, it's Truth finding the kill onto Xenotech. It's going to be Lulu looking for the kill onto Truth. Can he do so is the question he needs to. He is the last man standing for his team, and there's a Kraken knocking on his door. Truth just about escapes. That means Lulu is stuck between a rock and a hard place. He needs to find the kill. Got to run forward. Trying to find Truth. Trying to get the damage down. But a Vanguard keeps him alive for now. Red is going. But it's a watch. It's purchased by Truth to get him back to safety. And Truth will escape. Lulu is forced to backport. But Eco stops him. The Kraken is continuing its march onto a vein crystal. Good and Truth is looking to match its pacing. Eco just stopping Lulu from back. Reporting as Truth will enter the base on just a shimmer of HP. Take down Vein Crystal number two. Taking down the Vein Crystal as he stands. It will be Nova taking game one of the series. Truth's not dead yet. He's fine the entire time. Oh my god. So the analyst will definitely break this down, but the way that Eco and Truth just played that was phenomenal. I consistently thought he was going to die. I thought he'd overstepped his bounds, but he played that on a razor's edge perfectly. What an intense way to end a North American match, and it's only game one of this series. A 30-minute love affair between Nova and Gangstars as they look to try and best each other on the leaderboard. Let's give it back to our analysts to break down game one. I'm not sure I'd describe that as a love affair, if I'm all completely <laughs> honest right there. That was a battle between Maybe these Maybe a lover's teams. quarrel? Yeah, <laughs> definitely a quarrel of some kind. That was an exceptional... Honestly, one of the best games we've seen so far today. A 30-minute slugfest between these two teams. And we have to say, Gangstars stepping up. This is a new Gangstars that we're seeing coming on through here. Lulu especially, really leveling up. Yeah, doing a great job with this Rona pick of all things. You know, that's not what you expect. When you talk about how Gangstars, their strengths lie in the ranged game, the keeping opponents at bay. And Lulu just says, let's switch things up. Let's just go right in their face and go all out on them. And it looked like for a while it was going to work out. Yeah, it definitely looked like it was going to work out. And you mentioned Gangstars coming in stronger than how we have seen them so far yeah. in the season, both in terms of their draft and their execution. They were able to get a better draft. They executed on it. Not quite enough to win the game, though, against Nova. No, it wasn't quite enough. Now, let's get on into our replays from this one. First replay is going to be around 11 minutes into the game where we saw the first ace of the game coming into play. Yeah, this was where the game was completely up in the air still. And you see Gangstar's making some strong movements in the jungle, taking down the sentry. And then just right now, they're kind of in a spot where there isn't really any objective available to them because they just took down the only one. The gold miner is nowhere close to full. And you've just got Nova able to set themselves up an ambush here uh, of sorts, just trying to just push in the wave, force Gangstars to come to them. And then they're just going to draw them in. And it takes a long time. Like these movements are just really well played by the side of Nova to try and set situations up. Indeed, yeah. and I got to talk about Gangstar's rotations early game. They actually did a pretty good job of sticking together and playing as a unit, trying to move around the map, getting objectives and getting kills. They got three turrets, they got a crystal sentry, sorry, three kills, crystal sentry, and later on they get the first turret. That clip was incredible to watch. That is an incredible <laughs> team fight, I have to say. Just beautiful Vainglory glory before our eyes. <laughs> the next replay, I hope, actually has a fight in it. This was where we started to see these teams trying to siege on into these bases and trying to start to take these turrets. And we saw some fantastic defenses from both sides across this game. This, this was Gangstars pushing on him with the Kraken and a, and a great defense from Nova. Indeed, and they had a Kraken pushing in with them. The only thing is they're trying to dive under two turrets. CP Idris and Nova's composition did really well at kiting, can do really well at kiting, especially because they had the two turrets, like I mentioned. <laughs> Gangstar's composition was about diving the CP Idris and killing him. Whenever they were able to do that, they won the team fights. And when they, whenever they chose the right place to do that, they won the team fight. That one wasn't one of them. Yeah, and that was Nova defending. But then later on in the game at 24 minutes, we saw Gangstar's defending a push instead. So this was very much a battle of who could defend the strongest and who would be able to stop these Krakens. Yeah, and this is at a point where with Kraken pushing in, Nova were able to, again, start try and start this fight up. But so many times we see teams push with Kraken 
and choose to take the fight just at an inopportune moment. And that's exactly what we had here. Gangstars, they were already very close to being onto Nova when Nova tried to engage that. And then Gangstars just says, cool, we'll take a free couple of stuns with the Catherine and the Batiste. And then yeah. Rona's just going to be spinning right on you because she's already in melee range. She doesn't have to chase anyone down in that situation. Absolutely. And then our final fight was just chaotic, absolutely crazy. <laughs> yeah. And also, this final fight lasted a very, very long time. It really did last a very long time because it started well for gangsters. They were able to take down Blackfeather fairly quickly, but then Batiste gets stunned right here with the gauntlet, very unfortunate. And then Idris is able to close out the kill after the minions secure the kill on Batiste. And then Truth of Light, Really smart target focus right here to go for the Catherine instead of the Rona so that he can finish her up and then dance around the Rona. This team fight should have been gangsters, but we talked about how we should never count out Truth of Light on the CP Idris, and this is exactly why. He was able to stall Lulu Gio for such a long time that the Kraken was able to take the base later on, and we mentioned also that Kraken is a lot stronger to take down now in general, so it was a very tough situation for Lulu Gio to come out of. Yeah, even if as Lulu does get that get, get the kills here, it's still highly unlikely he's able to stop the Kraken in time with only one turret and by himself for 30 seconds. But uh, there was one small mistake in that in that fight when he's trying to chase down Truth, and it was he went, jumped after Truth when he hadn't basic attacked anyone in a little fair bit of time. Could have just gotten one attack off onto the Arden just to keep the breaking point stacks up. That was so key. He had 20 stacks because he didn't attack the Arden, jumped after Truth and didn't actually hit Truth, didn't quite have the range there. All of a sudden, the Truth gets just far enough away, just barely out of range, that the breaking point stacks start declining, and then he's not able to finish off the kill. So, again, just very small little things like yep. that that could end up turning fights, potentially maybe even save a game, but it's just so difficult. That's just ha like how intricate things can get and, in a fight. And the pressure in that kind of situation is so mm -hmm. difficult to think of the, each and every single intricate detail of a fight in those kind of scenarios, and it was... Uh, Nova that managed to take the first game in this series in the end. Definitely a hard-fought battle for them, but they did manage to grab that one. Now, it's time to start to talk about game number two as we look towards the draft. Are we still going to see things like this Batiste? This is the first Batiste we've seen all day coming on through. And there was a little bit of controversy, a little bit of conversation with the casters about the build, about how this actually had an effect on the game. Are we expecting to see it again here? Yeah. I mean, it's possible to come out, but... Just because it didn't work out for Gangstars, I'm not sure how confident they feel in running it again right afterwards. The Clockwork first, then into the Broken Myth is a build that Batiste actually does the best on just because of his kit. He has very high base damage, especially with his empowerment, low CP ratio, and long ability cooldowns. If you were going to go for the Clockwork into the Broken Myth, this is the best hero you could do it on, and that's what Xenotech decided to do last game. It worked out well for them mid-game, but as you scale into the late game, it doesn't do that much. Yeah, and one of the issues with that build, just to touch on this for a little bit longer as the draft has started, is the, the issue you run into is once you're getting to the third or fourth items, you're starting to have to buy infusions constantly, so those last couple items take a very long time to come out, and so he just doesn't have the CP damage necessary to scale up into the late game. Like Hamza was saying, I would almost like to see just go for the Piercing Spear, just to have that little bit of pierce, and then just leave it there and go into a different crystal item before finishing off the Broken Myth, perhaps, but that's a conversation for another day. Uh, unless Batiste gets picked up later today, then maybe we end up having that conversation again, but for now, it is going to be Vox and Arden First picked by each of these teams. Again, Arden, just so durable, so beefy, so difficult to take down. But Kroll and Blackfeather bans, this is something we're going to be seeing a lot of on this update. Right, I mean, Kestrel gets taken away from Truth of Light. This time he decides to go for the Vox. This is most likely going to be on Truth of Light in the lane. The Arden comes out for Mag Daddy B instead of the Catherine that we saw last game. The Catherine actually was doing fairly well, especially once she picked up her Echo and Null Wave. She had fairly impactful ultimates chained after the Norway was hitting. The oh. Black Feather is taken away. It's one of uh, it's one of Lulu's years, actually most st strongest heroes that we haven't seen yet in this update. We have an alpha coming on through here, though. We saw this. I believe it was Xenotech that played it on 2.8 as well in week three, if I'm not mistaken. Someone played it in week three, at least. And it had, did, did uh, alpha get any changes coming into 2.9? Is this something in regards to the buffs? Uh, it, I don't think the buffs uh, that uh, changes to Alpha are really going to be enough to significantly impact her, but the fact that the Aftershock 
is so strong right now. And just CP in general, you can build so many different ways. Alpha can just do a crazy amount of burst. You have a little bit of extra durability when it comes to getting put into your infinite reboot. And of course, if you go for a clockwork, that the clockwork changes are a huge buff to Alpha because you can reset your ultimate that much quicker. What? But Oso oh, and Flicker, All right. Nova go. is going to be innovating once again. We know Nova for innovation. They brought out the Batiste captain first out of everybody. And now Flicker and Ozo, humanist somewhere in the world, is over the moon at this Ozo pick. Flicker actually is a pick that we've been seeing a lot more in 2.9 in the ranked uh, side of the Vainglory game and also in scrims. A lot of uh, teams have been practicing him. He's very strong. He can use his invisibility a lot better now because also of the change that came onto Vision where if you deal damage with an ability to an invisible hero, you don't reveal them. That was not the case before. So Flicker benefits heavily from that. On top of it, he is fairly tanky. Combined with the Ozo, a CP Ozo most likely coming out from Long Delphi. That actually is a very strong hero that spikes mid-game with an aftershock. That's another aftershock hero that can utilize mm -hmm. that buff to the item. And if I'm not mistaken, Ozo also got a little bit buffed with the regards to his healing when using Three Ring Circus, because it had been nerfed a little bit, finally got buffed and brought back up in line with the rest of the healing uh, that's going on and the health increases and things like that. So uh, it could actually be a very strong cut pick. And you can see it's forcing uh, Gangstars to take a fair bit of time to try and figure out what they want to counter it with, what ah. they want to answer. It's going to be a Lyra. CP Lyra? Weapon Maybe? Arden is what I'm thinking. <laughs> I, we'll that's what I want to see. I I don't know. It could go either way. It could be a Weapon Alpha with a CP Lyra. This could be a Weapon Arden with a CP Alpha. This game, just take every note yeah. and all, all your notes, throw them out the window <laughs> because we have a Flicker, an Ozo, and a team with a Lyra Art and Alpha. This is absolutely insane. Yeah, I'm actually not sure how Gangstars is going to try to spin this draft because, in my opinion, either way or one of the many ways that they can go with it is not going to work out too well for them, especially against the Ozo and the Flicker. I like Nova's draft better. Okay, I mean, l let's talk a little bit about how these drafts are going to play out because, obviously, these are not standard playstyles, especially the Flicker. We barely ever see Flicker in Vainglory 8. How do you play with this captain in your roster right here? I mean, I'll talk about Nova's draft just because we know what we're going to see from them. Unlike Gangsters, which <laughs> they can go multiple ways with it. Nova are going to have to capitalize on the mid game that's going to come out of Ozo with the Aftershock. With Flicker's invisibility, his ability to play very aggressive and catch players off guard and out of position, they're going to need to find picks and try to snowball. Vox is another hero that's... It's very well scaling. If they get ahead, they can use it. All right, it's time to jump into the game. Hashtag Vainglory on Twitter to let us know who you think is going to take it. But it's time to pass it back over to Dowsy and the source for game number two. Game number two, Flicker Ozo, Weapon Power Alpha, CP Lyra. There's a lot to talk about here, source. So where do you want to start? Uh, I mean, I'd start with the Ozo, which, as far as I can remember, I haven't seen an Ozo in my time uh, here at the Vainglory 8, so I'm excited to see whether or not the side of Gangstars can kind of handle that. This is just unconventional across the board. Everybody's trying something new today. I feel like Nova's draft is far more 2.9.1 meta than Gangstar's draft. Ozo received buffs to his healing and Aftershock is in a far better position than it's ever been due to the fact that everyone has more health on update 2.9 and Aftershock does max health damage. So it is more damage output via the Aftershock. So Ozo actually received significant buffs and he's very strong on this update. Uh, Flicker also received buffs as well. He's tankier, he deals more damage. We we'll have to see how this one plays out. Gangstars are looking for an early team fight with this weapon out Alpha. Straight on to lone Delphi. Here comes Eco round the side, but oh my goodness, Delphi's getting bursted down. Delphi trying to escape at this point. Eco doing his best to disengage Xenotech, who's just going crazy. Truth over the wall, but a prime directive will connect. And Xenotech continuing the chase, and he will find first blood for himself on this Alpha. Now Gangstars are free to do what they want. Eco's currently stealthed up at the back of the map, meaning that Gangstars really can't find him. But they may just look to start up these backs because they know that Flicker is somewhere. Mac Daddy B trying his best to discover him with a van uh, guard, but can't do so. Xenotech will get himself his uh, central treant and a really good start for Gangstars. 
Yeah, that's a great way to open up the game just because Alpha can just be so oppressive. And you were talking about how Flicker got those buffs, how he's more of a bully in the early game, more health, more damage. If you kind of cut the early game out of its knees and you send Xenotech into a point where you have to deal with the Alpha, but then how do you run away from the Alpha? You're giving up everything, the pressure could be there and make up for the fact that this ZP Lyra isn't going to be massive damage. It's really for the utility there so that they have continuous CP damage. I think really this is, you know, a Xenotech composition, whereas last one was a Lulu Shi composition. This side of Gangstars, we'll see whether or not uh, Xenotech can lift the team on his back. That's what Xenotech does best when you put him on a carry jungler. He tends to carry. We'll have to see how he is able to do so. On 2.9, Lulu G playing this uh, this Lyra did receive damage grades to her auto attacks uh, at sacrifice of some range. And so people were kind of like, okay, maybe maybe we see more CP Lyra on this update. Uh, I guess that was kind of the initial uh, thought from people. Though so far, um, and you know, I've actually had plenty of CP Lyra's tested out in my uh, my high low solo queue games, and it just hasn't kind of worked out. So maybe Gangstars can do something that. Um, Europe hasn't been able to, <laughs> but Casino Tech now in a bit of trouble as Lone Delphi is just showing off the healing capabilities of this Ozo. Mac Daddy B is coming down for Xenotech. Xenotech might be able to just turn this fight around 2v1. Wouldn't that be in sounding as he just chases Lone Delphi out of his own jungle? Eco is currently in a bit of a pickle as well. Xenotech is going to continue delivering the pain to that flicker. There's no camps to take just yet, but they are respawning as we speak. No Delphi's making his way over to the other side of the map so you can try and steal away Xenotech's camps, but Lulu G has already made his way over. He's looking to try and start at the backs and prevent uh, these going to the opponent. And if Gangstars are able to secure uh, the majority of the backs as well as um, the enemy jungle, then they actually jungle went out of the straight. Meanwhile, Mac Daddy B's in lane 2v1, keeping everybody busy. Gangstars are firing on all pistons and just causing chaos around the map. I think. Xenotech is definitely feeling this uh, alpha. It's it you know definitely a lot of confidence there with how willing he is to step deep in enemy territory and just continue to fight. And if that you know fall you know flows over towards the mid to late portion of the game where you know you want to focus the alpha and get her out of the way, but you can't really focus the alpha. We can see Xenotech surviving through some insane team fights and just destroying the side of Nova. I, I'm not really sure where they find their best opportunity to fight. Maybe a pickoff onto Luigi, but that's going to be difficult. Lyra's kind of stuck through a character to deal with. Currently Xenotech with the components of a Sora Blade in inventory. Likely going to be his first purchase here. Right now putting the pressure continuously on to Lone Delphi. There is a sentry uh, to deal with and Lone Delphi is actually able to secure his Triant there. You see Flicker providing some vision for his team. Eco just kind of having a good time, being stealthed up and finding out where everyone is. He's going to escort Luji back to the lane. He's walk over a, a trap, so that will be uh, uh, quickly taken out, you would think, by Eco sometime in the future. Alternate current has been completed for Luluji, which would be your first item on Lyra most times. Then where he goes after that is kind of the interesting part because. You kind of relied on your broken myth of previous updates to, to make uh, make every mage viable, um, but no longer does broken myth give you the stacking elements. So does Lulu G go towards a, a dragon's eye with the broken myth? Or does he have something else planned for us? I'll find out. I'd actually like to see dragon's eye eve of harvest because I think the continuous amount of crystal damage coming out plus the scaling might actually allow for Lulu G to kind of play this blood tank strategy of I'm going to sit in the middle of the team fight, dish out continuous damage, get a little bit of regen, and uh, now the pressure is in on to Truth. It's going to be Truth in a bit of trouble. He's able to escape. That's Bangarang knocking Xenotech back. Accurate Bounce doing a bit of damage. Xenotech with his termination protocol looking for Truth. Doesn't find anyone. This weapon power alpha doesn't do much damage anyway. It's gonna reboot just in time to get alive. And Luigi goes down to Lone Delphi as it happens. Now Xenotech doing his best to get onto Truth, but currently Eco's slowing him down, and that's gonna be an acro bounce to death. Double kill for Lone Delphi Zozo. Mac Daddy B will be escaping. Nova find the fight that they want. Uh, Lone Delphi had three health bars, I think, over the course of that fight. Had got so much healing 
off of uh, the passive plus the fountain, just, you know, good positioning, the aftershock, everything kind of came together for the side of Nova in the middle of that fight. And the fact that Truth didn't get taken out towards the earlier stage, um, you know, almost got finished off, but was able to kind of kite and play it around the wall. That was just really good extended team fighting from the side of Nova, and they got Xenotech to overcommit. Xenotech had plenty of damage, almost killed Lord Delphi twice and it wasn't really enough. So maybe they can kind of bait Xenotech around the map. Luigi's damage really isn't there just yet. Like we said, we'll see where that build kind of takes him, um, you know, as the game goes on. But Nova definitely showing they're not out of the game yet, despite Flicker kind of not really getting to do early game things, despite all the pressure that was put on Lone Delphi. Yeah, he hasn't been able to be as much of a lane bully as we typically see Flicker be, but these team fights have been going very well for Nova due to the fact that Eco is able to slow down Xenotech and kind of just keep him in a position where he can't stick to truth. It's been very effective, and in a very short period of time, Eco's gonna hit level six, Moonfolk will come online, and all of a sudden, Nova will have engaged tools of dreams. Luigi going to engage on to Nova. There's the gauntlet being placed as well. Eco trying to sober him down. It's going to be bangerang onto Luigi, but he is able to block it up. No Delphi bouncing around, losing his life and will fall. It's going to be a pop of that termination protocol. But Xenotech will be able to reboot and he will look for a, a re engage onto Trufia. Is able to find a single kill purely just due to some mispositioning from Nova. Some great engage coming out of Luluji. Yeah, and that was also, you know, mispositioning underneath of the turret. So they were taking turret shots on that, and they almost won the team fight off. So we're seeing some black and from gang stars. They want to fight more. Oh, wow. Look at that. One for one. But that is not a good trade, I don't think, for Nova. Perhaps if this Moon Cloak can get Lone Delphi in position to kill Xenotech, then it's all right. Xenotech have the trouble. Under turret, struggling, perhaps not. No Delphi's in trouble. Gonna go back on in, laying down the acro bounce. There's the burst. That's Xenotech dead. Lone Delphi showing that Ozo's pretty strong on this update. Walking over scout traps, but they're gonna be okay. This is an EU. You don't die to scout traps in North America. <laughs> well, Lone Delphi putting on uh, pretty much an, Oz an uh, Ozo clinic, and you know. Eco not getting to be the bully, but is still a good part of those team fights. And we're seeing how much that's hampering Xenotech's ability to move around the map. Luigi is getting closer to that item, has picked up a little bit of cooldown reduction, is does have the two major components of any number of significant crystal power items. Maybe oh, no, it's Shattered Glass, so just raw damage not going for that stacking. Maybe maybe the two of us have just have too much faith in Dragon's Eye, and the pros don't agree. Yeah, well, uh, maybe. <laughs> Currently, damage output from Lone Delphi is insane. Xenotech looking to reboot, should be able to, but it might just go into a strong. No, they managed to take out the flicker. Eco's dead. Lone Delphi walking away. True. Lay down some cover fire on this uh, box here. Lone Delphi just sitting on the sidelines. The uh, Bangarang wasn't used by uh, Lone Delphi, so there's still that to, to, to be used in a team fight. Perhaps there's Nova now going to be under pressure to protect their turret. Truth, very aggressive. Now he might just lose his life, in fact. Bangarang goes through the portal, doesn't find a stun. That's going to be Vox dead. Lone Delphi, whoa, finds a single kill. Xenotech moves down as well. What is this output coming out of the Flicker and the Ozo? It's actually unreal. I mean, everybody's being kept in one spot. So imagine all the possible damage that Lone Delphi could be outputting onto all possible targets, and then factor in the healing that he's getting off of the increase on his passive. You're getting, you know, pretty well timed fountains coming out from uh, Eco to keep them alive, and there is no uh, poison shift. Now, looks like Xenotech might be considering that. Does have the life steal, does have the additional attack speed, might pick that up and that could be what they're looking to kind of shut down Lone Delphi on. The uh, point of has been in there for truth. We've seen what happens when Xenotech gets taken out early. Sometimes it manages to come through, sometimes it doesn't. So the focus fire is almost there for Nova, but as the fights go on, Lone Delphi is just being allowed to kind of move throughout the map. The moment he steps away from the fight, it's as if the side of gang stars literally forget he exists and he shows up once again and it's just outputting massive damage. Currently, you see the vision wars have started. Mac Daddy B and Eco both with a contraption of their own. Was buffed on 2.9, now holds four charges of either flares or scout traps, depending on how you want to use it. It does make it a little bit more viable to pick up as a captain. And 
against a flicker is often prioritized. Currently Nova starting up this gold miner. Gangstars know it's happening though, due to the fact they can see the auto attacks going out. Xenotech bangerang into the middle of the fight. It is where he wants to be, but he's silenced on uprooted on down. Termination protocol pops, and that's gonna be Xenotech dropping as he tries to reboot. Lu Lu able to escape. Nova with the single kill, gonna get themselves a gold miner. Great engage from Nova, very, very decisive to throw, you know, Immense pretty much follow the line that is like, oh, you're gonna hit something, send them to the wait for it right down that path, and uh, it got two members uh, pretty much kind of contained in that space. Doesn't, didn't really feel like Mac Daddy D had the uh, ability to kind of maneuver around, get off um, as much shielding as possible, really kind of facilitate the movement that you want to see from Xenotech, and like I said, Xenotech was silenced. Not a lot he can do, couldn't get off the uh, termination protocol, at least in a position that he liked. He eventually did manage to use it, but was a little bit removed from the fight. Would have liked to be uh, deeper into that um, triangular bush, uh, you know, closer over towards where the camp was. And Lone Delphi is just dictating the pace of this game. He has the Eve of Harvest, is healing off of everything he's got. Actually picked up the Atlas Pauldron to start to kind of shut down Luluji and put more pressure on the Xenotech because he picked up that Poison Shield so has a little bit more attack speed. So, you know, Lone Delphi, he hasn't had to go for the third damage item yet. He's just going to become impossible to kill. And I don't know how the side of Gangstars stop him on the rampage he's on. Might be the continuous story we've seen here. The Broken Myth isn't built in time. Perhaps you shut down the effectiveness of this Ozo. But right now, Lone Delphi 5 1 and 1 is certainly a scary threat that Gangstars are considering. Luluji, Clockwork, is now online, has built on into it. So, we're going to have those sigils and the Bright Bulwarks off cooldown very quickly. Uh, but there is no ramp up, of course, and there is no piercing either which means that the Aegis is very effective and you're relying a lot on Xenotech to output damage. It doesn't have a breaking point, so not ramping up over the team fights. Um, and it's, it's kind of just looking for a bit of burst damage you feel onto Truth. Yeah, and Xenotech is shifting towards a defensive build, so doesn't feel confident that he can survive the fight, which means that damage is going to be stunted. That's a six item build out for him to actually get that breaking point with what he's currently put into slots. Maybe, uh, you know, after that weapon infusion, he decides to go with that. And now it's popped the weapon infusion, so the slot is open. Let's see if they find a fight to make use of it. Yep. You'd assume that an engage would come through from Luluji. Straight on to Nova Bright Bulwark, prevent Lone Delphi from using his abilities. Does shut him down very effectively. If you're able to then take him out of the team fight, and that is huge for Gangstars. Here's the Moon Cloak going on in. Oh, Mac Daddy B's missed them. They're right on top of them. They're looking for the fight. That's going to be a gauntlet stunning up Truth. That's going to be Lone Delphi diving through the gauntlet walls. Bangarang knocks Lulu G up into the air. Lulu G will go down. You feel as the Acro Bounce flies on and through. Lulu G is dead. And now it's Xenotech trying to get him to Truth, but he could body blocking up this Alpha. Termination Protocol will be popped as he's done trying to reboot under the turret. Xenotech, though, will go down before he gets the reboot. And now it's Mac Daddy B under threat. And Double for Truth and Ace for Nova, the turrets to be taken. A beautiful gauntlet comes through from Mac Daddy B. The Arcane Passage is in great position for them to be able to pull further back, but Lone Delphi doesn't care. Lone Delphi doesn't care about your ability, he doesn't care about your termination protocol or your infinite reboot. He is going to find you and he has put so much pressure onto this backline with this basically two damage item spike. Look at this replay coming through. Look at Lone Delphi, just completely unchecked against Lulu G. And all this time, Truth is just outputting damage onto Xenotech, who's doing his best to escape. Eco with the body box so huge. The Prime Directive takes him further away from Truth. He wanted to be closer, and it was just clean up time for Nova at that point. As we uh, come back kill, to ace. the game. Neither of these teams have really decided to pick a significant fight for the moment, right until I say that. Yeah, Gauntlet will be placed on down. Lone Delphi is in the middle of it all. Mooncloak popped for the movement speed. Lone Delphi does get caught in the Gauntlet Walls as Truth is struggling to find a kill. He's going to have to try and escape Xenotech. Lone Delphi's going on to Lulu G. Will find the kill. Truth, can he get escape? No, gets blown up by the Termination Protocol. And now we have a two versus two. Captain's very low, but Jungler's very healthy. It is going to be Lone Delphi going in onto Xenotech here. Currently just trying to find the damage output. 
Crystal Sentry making this a two versus three, and Lone Delphi and Eco May just look to disengage it, not wanting to fight around the Crystal Sentry. So, a new strategy for Gangstars has, has arisen. Completely leave Luluji to fend for himself and take out Truth, because at that point, that's actually not a bad 2v2, assuming that Xenotech is at full health. Now, had I used the passive, had already used the ultimate, didn't really have those resources in place, but it was in their jungle, they could kind of position around it. I'm surprised they didn't finish off Mac Daddy B from the side of Nova. He was sitting at very, very low health. He would have been a free pick off. Despite that, they decide to then continue to chase. They take him out and then you can kind of force your opponent to have to move into the jungle. So a little bit of an oversight by Nova, you know, looking for that aggressive kill onto Lulu G, who they've pretty much taken out of the fight, uh, you know, before anything can really happen. We haven't seen Lyra survive or at least be able to kite with the exception of that one fight we saw where he was firing over the wall. And the damage was kind of there up until that, you know, up until they managed to make that happen. Ooh. It's not gonna work. <laughs> the passageway gets Luluji to safety. Here's the fight breaking out. Stun up on two lone Delphi, but it just doesn't matter. Truth out putting the damage outside the goal, and that's in attack taken into a reboot and dead straight up. That was the cleanest team fight we've seen from Nova so far. Mac Daddy B survives, but there's a Kraken to be taken. Nova will just look to take it. And they got every member of Gangstars kind of standing on top of each other. Maximum bounce value from Truth, who's still going to chase out Mac Daddy B. Uh, they might actually need his damage on the Kraken. Let's see how quickly they're doing it. No, uh, I actually don't think they need that much help from him. So he can kind of chase these around. They can clear out a jungle camp or two. But everybody was sort of stacked up. Maximum slow effect from Nico. Maximum damage from Lone Delphi. Maximum bounces from Truth. And everybody was there. It was a good clean team fight and they took it despite being in enemy territory and uh, now we see the broken myth coming up for Lone Delphi so he's kind of hitting that maximum damage build and uh, he, he will have that pierce to cut through the defenses from the side of Gangstars they're already having trouble surviving team fights I don't know how they survive further I don't know how they survive at all right now Nova just look unstoppable a 6,000 gold lead as well they're just uh, continuing to annihilate. Here comes the Mooncloak, spotted up by that Scout Trap. And it is just going to be disengaged now. Crystal Sentry going to work. I think Nova shall ignore it for the most part. Now looking to try and get on into the base of Gangstars. Finish this game once and for all. Gangstars, it's their final defense here. Can they make this Crystal Power? Weapon power, uh, Elyra, weapon power, uh, Alpha work is the question. Luluji once more knocked up. Alpha trying to do her best. Gormit has been escaped, but Lone Delphi does get trapped up in it. Lone Delphi goes very low. Lone Delphi walking away. He reflex blocks to get on through. He's starting to heal. He can't jump though. And that is him dead. Now Xenotech getting onto Truth. Can he find the kill? Luluji is dead. And it will be Truth going down as well as he finds himself pinned. It's Eco! It's the last man standing! And a Kraken as well! This little red panda looking to finish the game for Nova as we speak. And he is so tanky as well. Look at him go! Eco, last man standing, will take the series for Nova against Gangstars, who just could not make it work. They finally managed to bring down Lone Delphi. They finally managed to cage Truth enough to finish him but only because Eco is finishing the game. A great display of skill from Nova, and uh, now the draft gets interesting. Do you actually fear this Ozo? Does this become a priority pick or a priority bet? I'm certainly going to look forward to see how the rest of North America adapts around Lone Delphi and his jungle prowess. If there's an update for Lone Delphi to be a carry threat of threats, then it is 2.9. Mark my words, Nova over Gangstars will take this series moving on to day two. Let's hear from our analysts. We've got some monkey business on our hands, boys and girls, as Lone <laughs> Delphi running away with this one on the Ozo pick. Excellent play coming out from him and from the rest of Nova. And once again, we see another game in this series ending on a knife edge with a crack and push in. Eco rushes to try and finish the Vein Crystal as well. Incredible stuff coming out from these two teams. Gangstars definitely had a good showing in this series, but Nova bested them in the end. Yeah, and at the end of the day, you do have to look a little bit at the draft. I mean, Gangstars, this is a, such an unconventional draft that it just I, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I mean, the Crystal Lyra, this went away, I thought, you know, six to seven months ago.